In this video, we're going to be talking about unit of measure conversions in Sage 50. Um, in some places, you also see it referred to as multi packs, um, but the more common term industry wide is, is unit of measure conversion. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to use different units of measure for a particular inventory item. So you can buy it in one unit of measure, sell it in a different unit of measure, and stock it in another unit of measure. As an example here, here we're in the, the sample company, Bellwater Garden Supply, and we've got a seed packet. And so you can see here that our stocking unit of measure is packet. But if we go to this other button, um, we don't have any other units of measure set up for it yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, to make some other units of measure. So we're going to go back to the maintain menu here and go to units and measures. So let's say that um, we buy these from our supplier in cases of 100, and each case has 10 boxes with 10 packets each. So we're going to set up a couple different units of measure here. We're going to set up a box of 10, and you have to specify because if you just said box, the boxes could be different sizes for different products. So and we'll say box of 10. And then here, number of stocking units is 10 because we have 10 packets of seed in each box of 10. We'll save that and we'll make a new one. Case 100. Case of 100. And so it doesn't matter what 100 what, it just knows the 100 of whatever our stocking unit is. So I'm going to save that and we'll jump back to our maintain inventory items. Now I'll come back to this stocking unit measure, hit this button right here, and we're going to tell it that we want to purchase and sell in different quantities. So here for the purchasing multi-pack, we're going to say a case of 100, and you can put in a weight, a UPC code if you wanted there. And I'm also going to check this box that says use as default for all purchases, because we're always going to purchase that in the case of 100. Then we're going to come down to the sales multi-pack, and I'm going to choose box of 10. Now in this case, I'm not going to check the use default for all sales box because most people are just going to buy a single packet of seeds, but we'll have them available to sell as a box of 10 also. So I'm going to click OK there, and we'll save that. So now you can notice here that we have seven as our quantity on hand. So let's go and purchase some of these. And we'll go to our supplier here invoice one two three and we're doing a quantity of one and you see that it defaulted to our case of 100 but we could choose one of the others if we if we wanted to and it's automatically multiplied the price out um, for 100 units so let's save that we'll jump back to maintain inventory items and let's refresh that so now you can see that even though we only bought one case, we now have 107 packets on hand. And so now if we go to sell some, we'll go by our sales invoicing. And again, we're going to sell one. And this time we're going to choose our box of 10. And notice that the price right now is $1.39. If I choose my box of 10, it automatically updates to $13.90. So let's save that. Go back to maintain inventory items again and refresh that once again. And you can see we've gone down from 107 to 97 because we sold one box of 10. So that's a great feature. Comes in really handy. But um, there are times when uh, reality kind of intrudes on the software designer's method of doing things. So I want to talk about one serious limitation uh, in this uh, in this you know, feature. So you'll notice that when we were setting up our new unit of measure, we have to put in a whole number here for our number of stocking units. So in this example of seed packets, you know, that works great, or any other discrete items that you sell, um, you know, you're always going to have a stocking unit that's, that's one, that, that's where you're purchasing unit measure and your selling unit measure are, are evenly divisible by a common denominator. But if you uh, buy things uh, in a roll by the meter and you want to sell them by the foot, 
or if you buy them by the pound and want to sell them, um, you know, by the uh, milliliter, anything like that, um, where things don't divide evenly, then this feature ceases to work for you. Um, it's unfortunate that Sage has not uh, given us the ability to enter a decimal place there, but that's a, a serious limitation you should know about before you make a bunch of plans to try to try to move forward with this feature. So anyway, for those of you who do uh, you work with discrete units, I hope you find this uh, this feature helpful and uh, this video useful, and uh, um, you know that this will be make you more productive.